what's up YouTube, welcome to another video by Wrenches and Wrenches and today I'm going to show you how you can test your car battery using a multimeter. Okay, but before we get on to the testing procedure, we should only take a minute or two. Let's quickly go over some, uh, what are some symptoms of a bad battery and also what are some common mistakes people make when they're trying to figure out a problem with their uh, car's starting system. Okay, so the first mistake people usually make is that they misdiagnose a bad battery with a problem with their starter. You know, what that happens usually when uh, they go one day to start the car, they turn the key and all they hear is a ticking sound. Or they turn the key and the car turns over very slowly and it doesn't start. Or in other cases, they put the key in the ignition. They have power when they put the key in the ignition, but when they turn it, they hear a loud pop and then there is no power at all. In those first two instances, people usually think that uh, there's a problem with their starter and since it's only turning over the car over slowly, it's draining the battery. Uh, but if you have a good battery, you should be able to crank your car for 30 seconds without any pickups. So that actually means that your battery is weak and it's not supplying enough amps to your starter to turn the car over fast enough for it to start. But in the third example, in my experience, that usually indicates a problem with your battery terminal connectors. They've either become loose or uh, they're damaged, or there's also a possibility of uh, excessive corrosion buildup on your battery terminals and your battery terminals connectors. So you need to inspect those and if they're dirty, clean them thoroughly. Dirty battery terminal connectors are the number one cause of your battery dying. Second most common mistake people make is that they mistake a battery problem with a problem with their alternator. What happens in those instances is that the one day they go to start the car, they can't start it, they get a jump start, the car starts fine and runs fine, but as soon as they start driving around and uh, you know, once they start using their uh, accessories, maybe roll up a window, turn on the AC or even step on the brakes, the car shuts off. Now it's common knowledge and also true that the battery is only there to start the engine. Once the engine starts, the alternator takes over and supplies power to the, to the car. But what happens there is that your battery is completely shot and you probably have uh, heavily corroded battery terminals and battery terminal connectors and that puts an extra strain on your alternator and your alternator is not able to uh, deal with that and therefore once you start using more accessories in addition to that extra strain, your car shuts off. Also it should be said that if you don't replace a weak battery or the battery that's going bad, it's gonna, you know, that extra strain that's on your alternator, it could cause your alternator to go bad as well. Okay, and now on to the actual testing procedure. What you'll need to do is get your multimeter, turn it on, and then turn the setting to DC voltage. On this multimeter, it only says V, but on most multimeters, it's, you're gonna see DCV, which stands for DC voltage, and the setting you want on that is for 20. And also, these multimeters are really cheap. You know, you can get a, you know, even a simpler version of this at Harbor Freight for under 10 bucks. What you wanna do next is to touch the negative side of the battery with your black lead, and then the positive side of the battery with your red lead. And the voltage reading you're looking for is about 12.4 to 12.8 volts. Now I'm gonna be using these clamps to hold these in for this video, but you obviously don't have to, you just need to touch them. And there you have it, we got 12.7 volts. Okay, so the voltage reading is within spec, but in order to be sure that our car battery is indeed good, we need to do also a load test on the battery. Now there's testing equipment that put a load on the battery and then uh, measure how the health of the battery, but we don't have that. So what we're gonna do is actually start the engine, therefore putting a load on the battery and then measure our, our voltage drop. We don't wanna see the voltage drop below 10.5 volts. If the voltage drops below 10.5 volts, there's a chance that there's a problem with your battery. It could need to be recharged or it could be bad. Okay, so as you might have seen, our lowest voltage drop was at 10.6 volts and that's within spec, therefore we have verified that this battery is indeed good. Now those are obviously good numbers and I knew this battery was good before I started this video, but let's talk about different numbers. Let's say on the voltage reading you get 9.5 volts or lower. Anything in that range, you pretty much need to replace your battery. Um, your battery is done for, there is no charging it, there's nothing you can do, you just need to replace it. But let's say you get 11 volts. Uh, you know, at 11 volts, there's a chance you can recharge that battery. And what I would do is, uh, you know, if you have corrosion on your battery terminals or your battery terminal connectors are damaged or loose, I would replace them, thoroughly clean them, then put them back on the battery. Uh, if you can start the car or get a jump start, get the car going and get it to a local auto parts store. And they'll be able to, to put a load test on your battery to, and determine whether that battery can be charged or it still needs to be replaced. 
Now let's say you replace your battery, you've got a brand new battery, you put it in the car, you change your uh, battery terminal connectors or, or uh, clean them thoroughly, but then again the next day you go to start the car and you, probably, you still can't start the car. Well that usually means there's a parasitic draw on your uh, car's battery and it's uh, emptying out the charge in your battery and we'll need to find that. I'll do a follow-up video covering that and then after that we'll do a video on uh, how, to do, uh, how to test your alternator using a multimeter as well. Okay? So yeah, I hope this video helps people out there. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.